I feel like I'm in the presence of a celebrity, the new mayor of Otter Creek, cleaning up corruption on a daily basis, and honestly, healing this town. Madam Mayor Therese, think of this like the interview that you've done with Channel 20. You've also talked to reporters for the Chiefland Citizen. Uh, what the hell is just another media platform? You, are you good with answering some questions today? Yeah. Okay. I promise not to ask easy ones. Deal? <laughs> Deal. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm curious. You're, you're how far into your mayorship so far? Um, wow. It's not even been two weeks. From the 5th to the 22nd. Isn't, isn't that wild? Isn't that wild? It seems like much longer. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it does. So how many hours have you put into this so far? Two weeks, you were roughly around two weeks, not yet at two weeks. How many hours are you putting into this whole town? Uh, could we call it a circus? Oh, yeah, it has been. Yeah. We're cleaning up the circus. Um, I would say about 48 hours a week and we're, in office. When I go home, I'm still doing things. And we're only paying you $125 a month? Yeah, I think that equates to 62 cents an hour. All right, 62 cents an hour. If I was on the council, I promise I would, um, I'd be making a motion to give you a raise. But <laughs> we both know I'm not on the council. So I'm curious with working with the new council, the two weeks that you've been in this process now, what have been, let's say, your top three biggest challenges? Um, the first challenge I would say is other council members who are not willing to help serve the people in the town in the proper way. Uh, it seems like a bunch of roadblocks in getting things done that should have been done throughout the years. And that's one of the huge challenges is all throughout the years nothing was ever done to keep us current with the times. So you're stepping into something that's a huge, huge mess and you have all these things coming at you with critical timelines for funding and all these things that you have to deal with first. And a lot of people don't see all those little things where the previous people dropped the ball on and they had to answer for five different things and just let it slide. So we're missing out getting different revenue funding and which has been resolved and immediately as soon as I found out. But there's all different things that they dropped the ball on, things with zoning and planning, just a lot of different things. So those get your first attention. So although there's so many things like a website and changing locks and dealing with the park and the library, those are kind of on the back burner, but the locks, not so much. But the library and the park are more on the back burner for things that need to get done. The website is also important, but that was on the back burner. There's just a lot of things that once that they never did. So it's just critical to get the first things done and then we can concentrate now on the website. And all the ordinances were left undone for so long that they're way back in the times. It would almost be easier if you were starting the town right now and just moving forward. But you have to clean up all the loose ends and that takes more time. It's like restoring an old house that's in the historic district and you have to do everything a certain way and it costs more money than just building a house fresh. So that has been a huge challenge. But it would be great if the people that were elected to the board were serving the people in the right way so that we could all be moving forward. I mean, it seems a little silly to worry about equipment that should have been thrown away so many years ago. Is that is that all the equipment I'm seeing back there? It's not all of it. There's actually some more still from the other building, a few more pieces that are really old, completely yellowed. They're so old that it's just complete trash. There's more. But there's more. And that should have been dealt with all this time. And it's a roadblock to have to wait for the next meeting to get a decision on it. but. That is what it is. I would just hope in the future that everybody who was elected to be on this board would think more about the people in this town and what they're doing to obstruct us from moving forward. If you don't want to be on the board serving people, don't. Step down, right? Yeah. I mean, really. Completely. Because there's other people in this town that would love to take the spot and go forward and doing positive things. So my, my original question is, what are the three biggest challenges? And I, I'm going to summarize your statement. It's working with a council that doesn't want to really work for the people. 
and it's cleaning up a mess that was left behind and it's prioritization of projects. Yes. So would that be a good summary? It would. Okay, so follow-up question on your prioritization of projects. There's so much to do, in my opinion, that hasn't been done yet. We just saw all the old equipment that should have been discarded years and years and years and years ago. How do you, as a mayor in your leadership, how do you prioritize what's what's the first, what gets second, what gets third? You know, what what are the immediate needs? What are the we can wait and hey, we're going to delegate? I have to put the things that are costing us money up front, like the loss of revenue for certain deadlines or lawsuits. All those things need to come first because that's a loss of money and any deadlines that are pertinent for any legal things. That obviously comes first. And then after that, I can start looking at you know, the equipment, but the good thing is I don't sleep as much as I should, I guess, and I just keep writing notes and working on things because it's a huge challenge that I would like to complete. So for me, I'll just keep my plate full and dish it out until it's done. So if I can summarize what you said at the, the last town hall meeting, it was, I don't sit, I do. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I went crazy. Like in, internally, I wanted to scream like I was in a stadium and my team just won. Like I, I was like, oh my goodness, that's the mayor that Otter Creek needs. And as such... Uh, I think the residents are even more now seeing how badly they needed you and your leadership. What have been some of your top three victories? I know it's only been less than two weeks, but top three victories thus far. For one, just getting in here and seeing the mess and being able to straighten out the water billing system to add an itemized breakdown to give people the proper notice of their bills that to me was a huge thing um, just even looking at the ordinances and seeing how old they are and to get to start working on those and even knowing people's pay scales and I do believe some of them are not being paid the right amount which will be addressed at the next meeting as well but it's just that there's just been so many things that have been bothering me sitting on the other side and not being able to do and the whole town being shut down and quieted over the years and being able to finally act for myself as well as everyone else that is exciting so so if i understand you correctly there's light now where there was darkness before yes and, yes. and you literally are are shedding light really you got the key and you came into the office and then I mean, the lights, yes. the lights were actually on, not because Russell paid the bill for the lights, <laughs> but the lights were still on, and, and now you're sharing that light with the people where they've been kept in the dark for so long. Right. Okay, so that, that would be victory number one. The, there's light now where there was darkness. What would you consider victory number two? Oh, we may not be there yet. I mean, I'm not, yeah. I, don't, I don't want you to push something out there that doesn't exist. Yeah, it's actually just having stuff in place because there's so many things right now that are in place and being worked on. So the victory hasn't been achieved yet, but it's in the process, in the works. So that's exciting in itself. It almost feels like a victory just to have it in the process. Um, can, can I add a victory? Sure. All right, here, here's a victory I want to add. This is from my perception, okay? A victory I want to add is that the people, the residents of Otter Creek, are rallying around to help each other. And you see that in town hall. You've got volunteers in town hall. You've got people who are videoing the corruption now. It's nothing now to see somebody with a camera in Otter Creek and there goes Russ and there goes whatever's happening. So there's been a, an outpouring of volunteerism and there's been an outpouring of, of helping one another that good percentage of the residents, and, and I often have said this, 95% of the residents here are the sweetest, most loving, most giving, most generous. They are beautiful, beautiful people. The problem was the 5% and part of that 5% has been removed from the office. Yes. And so that's, that's in my words. But I want to I want to I want to share that with you as a victory that I think you can be proud of because that doesn't happen without the appropriate leadership. Under Russell's leadership, 
Everybody was kept in the dark. No one was allowed to do anything under your leadership. Town Hall is literally open right now. I'm sitting in here in a chair with you. This would never have happened with Russell. Right. Ever. I love discussion. I love people getting involved. Everyone has something to contribute. Even if the end decision didn't have to do with what they contributed in advice or suggestions, it still was taken in. So that's very nice. Um, Somebody just called in a question. Probably. Yeah, and no. it's been nice even the support from all over the world. I even spoke to someone from Germany. So it's just been nice that everybody is supporting it, um, giving useful suggestions from all over. That helps tremendously just to know people are in support of you and what you're doing because it is long days and it gets mentally tiring at the end of the day and you wonder if you accomplished enough because you come in here wanting to do so many things at the end of the day there's a lot of roadblocks because the internet's no good or different things throughout the day that you wonder if you got enough done because i like to see a lot of results at the end of the day so i'm a little bit harder on myself um, so it's just very nice having everybody support all right, let's talk about that support. You literally have the world rallying around you and your leadership right now. That's That's got to feel good. It does. Okay. We also know people are fickle. I mean, I'm just going to share this from my own personal experience as a public figure. People can love you one moment. The next moment, they can hate you. So be ready for that, okay? Because they're going to hate me right now for what I'm about to say. I, if you don't mind, I'm just. I just want to address... Madam Mayor's fans, okay? I know you have an outpouring of love for Teresa and what she's doing. And every phone call, every email, while it's appreciated, you can hear how tremendously busy she is. She's been handed literally a dump. And she's had to go through and find the gems. And, and so every phone call, every email, every you name it, while, while it's, I'm sure it feels great internally, that takes more time from her daily responsibilities. So this is where they're going to hate me. I'm going to encourage all the fans and the followers. If you want to jump on the Spotlight of Otter Creek Facebook page, you can share your outpouring of love there. That's pretty much, a, that's a better appropriate place because when she has downtime, if she says, well, you know what, I want to go check out that Facebook page, then she can go there and look at all of that encouragement. But what we don't want to do is, is pull her away or distract her with all of the tremendous amount of things and priorities and projects that have to be accomplished in such a timely manner. You have to remember, Russell locked this building for over two months. Nothing got done. And then all the mess was transferred over. And everything is on a timely basis. This has to be done at this time. This has to be done at this time. This has to be done at this time. And right now you're thinking, well, Jeremy, aren't you taking her time right now? Yes, I am. I can't believe she's not kicking me out. <laughs> so the outpouring of love and encouragement has been wonderful. I'm going to say this. Please don't call the Town Hall of Otter Creek. Please don't email the Town Hall of Otter Creek. As a matter of fact, while you have a legal right to do a records request, I'm going to even ask that all of you who are fans who put in a records request in Otter Creek and, and you went, well, I'm going to help the cause for what the hails or we're going to help expose the corruption. I'm going to ask that you actually re, you know, withdraw that records request because that takes more time. That takes more money. I mean, they could charge you 15 cents a page. You could be looking at thousands of dollars in fees for the records request. And I know you had the good heart and the good intent to actually make that request, but I'm going to ask that you withdraw it so that town hall can actually work on the things that need to be worked on versus records requests when I've got that handled with my legal team. So they may hate me after this. Are we still good? We are. We're still good. Okay, we're good. All right, all right, we're good. <laughs> and I want to say real quick, as far as the public records are concerned, we are trying to compile them, and unfortunately they are put in so many different locations that it's been a task to compile them. But the future, I want them to be on the website when we have the website. That is what the future looks like. So if everybody could just bear with us for a little while, we will have those things available for everybody in a few clicks. 
but it is going to take some time because we're going through boxes and boxes of paperwork and we have to compile everything in a complete fashion before it's uploaded. So we don't want incomplete versions of anything up there. I like everything to be accurate, but that is the future that we're looking to provide for everybody. So just be patient with us, please. You mentioned the future. <laughs> That's my next question. What do you envision the future of Otter Creek to be like? In the future, for one, we will have a website, paying your bill online, being able to see the ordinances online, having messages to the residents. The residents can go on there to ask questions if need be. Um, I would like in the future to update our park, get some basketball hoops. Maybe I could shoot a few hoops in between emails here and there. Um, maybe even putting a privacy fence down in between this property and the other so kids can utilize the park without bothering the neighbors. Um, I would like to get together as a community and set up a committee to help people to clean up their yards. A lot of people are elderly and don't have the means to clean up. They want to, but they can't. So for the people that care and would like to volunteer, we can coordinate together to clean up the yards. I'd like to see the dogs being taken care of. I would hope that the people who own the dogs would start keeping them indoors, but if that's not the case, we'll have to go by other means to handle that. But I just see more people pitching in and working together to have a nicer town. And I wanna see perhaps festivals, more places where we can have community. Can we still sell two-inch pipe hot dogs at dollar sales at the uh, at the old schoolhouse? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. People love to come together and do that, and that's Ooh. another great thing. The Christmas party, all these things that were once coming back and people getting together, and that's what this town has been missing. Everybody's been divided and fighting with each other. That needs to stop. People need to come together and start enjoying each other and this town. So you're bringing the Christmas parties back? Oh, yes. Woo! Darlene Hudson is going to be happy. Oh, yes. And I want to be a part of that. I've already shared with Darlene last December. I was like, hey, they used to give $500 towards Christmas gifts for the children, for the kids. And Russell took that from the budget. That's all in a, in a town hall meeting. And Darlene said... Where's the money? And now I, I believe you found the money. I mean, the money was being spent and misappropriated different avenues here, there, everywhere. I went up to Darlene afterwards. I was like, listen, I'll give you the $500. I'll give you more than that for kids for Christmas. And so I, I absolutely, I would ask and request that you allow George and I to be a part of that process. We'll do whatever we can. We'll open up the, the schoolhouse if that's a better venue. Uh, we'll help buy gifts. We'll do whatever we can. And we'll include you. I promise we'll include you because I know our fans are so loving and generous as well. More information to come on that. We'll do that when George and I get back down here for, for the winter, which will be October this year. We're planning on coming in October. Nice. So so Christmas party is back on. Yes. Wow. Okay. Are you playing Santa? Am I playing? Belinda just says, am I playing Santa? Yes. Yeah. She says, no, we're going to get Doug to play Santa. He'd make a good one. He'd make a great one. And you're dressing up too as Mrs. Claus. Only in your dreams. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. All right. So Otter Creek is on the map now. This this little town on the way to Cedar Key, uh, people actually know where Otter Creek is now. And when I first came here, I never heard of Otter Creek. I, I'm curious, how did you end up in the Otter Creek? I ended up here because I was working as the postal clerk. Otherwise, I didn't know anything about Otter Creek either. So you, you literally had all the mail of all the different residents here. Yes. And so you, you know everybody then. Yeah. Everybody interacted with you. And you know, you know where everybody lives. You know, so really, really, you're the go-to person. You are the appropriate person to be mayor. You have a relationship with everybody. You established it with their mail. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, man, that's incredible. Okay. So if people wanted to come and see Otter Creek, because Florida is a vacation destination, right? What would you tell them to go and see in Otter Creek? In Otter Creek? Would it be the, the boat with trees growing out of it? Or, you know, right now, okay, <laughs> let me back up a little bit. What, in the future, 
because we were talking about your future and how you envision, what would you like to be able to tell them, hey, these are the things you're proud of about Otter Creek? Um, just being able to drive through the town and not seeing trash everywhere, I do hope that that boat finds its way out of here. Maybe all this rain will let it sail. I'm not sure. <laughs> but that tree might be anchoring it down. There's like three trees <laughs> growing in it. Um, that's kind of sad in my opinion. So I just would like people to be able to drive through the town and say, wow, this is a cute little town. And, you know, people wave at each other and be friendly instead of driving through going, wow, look at this dump. So I just want people to be able to drive through and say, I'd like to live in a cute little town like this. Where people help each other. Yes. Where, where people are there for each other. If you go, hey, I'm out of eggs. Do you have any? And you go, yeah, I've got like five dozen right now. How many do you want? Or, you know, do you have a tractor? Right. You know, can can we help, you know, put gravel down somewhere? Or, yeah. or somebody's you know, tree fell down. Tree they need fell help down. cutting it up. I'd like that to be in play where everybody's just helping each other. Yeah, I, Carl Hughes, one of the members of the town, had a good idea. And he, he wants to do a community yard sale. And I was like, you know what? Do it over. Do it over at the at the schoolhouse. Yeah, I think that would be incredible. Have the community come, and then I can help promote that, and then you know the followers can come. And I mean, let's face it: who doesn't love a deal? Who doesn't love a garage sale, a flea market, a thrift store? It's probably just me. But um, <laughs> there's so many different treasures in this town. So, and it just so happens the greatest treasure is the people. And so it's been a, a blessing to actually live here. All right. Needs. No town is perfect. You know that. I know that. And every town has needs. And I look at, you know, I, I even, I'm looking at even stains up here, okay? Mm -hmm. So I can see a bunch of different needs. But if you were to give top five, off the top of your head, top five needs for the town or particularly town hall, because really this is where your realm is. Uh, what would those be off the top of your head? Well, first off, as everybody knows, we need that sound system. Yes. Limb walkers. <laughs> Limb walkers said that they were going to donate the sound system and set it up. Robert, Dan, you got to get out here. Three weeks to the next town council meeting. Yeah, for town hall alone, um, the internet, we need better internet with the website. So that's a huge need. And I don't know, in the future, I would like somehow to create a better table and chair space in this room but that might be a bigger task because this is this whole room is the setup's a little off yeah well this wall well that's a block wall it's not a load bearing wall so, so it could come it, out it could come out could could we could we actually go peek and see what's on the other side of there right if now? If you want to see that mess. Okay, let's let's just peek. I'm curious. We're still on the same question, but let's peek and let's see what's on the other side of this block non-load bearing wall. Uh, this is interesting. Wow. Whoa, oh, duster. I got the duster. Okay. All right. All right. Wow. Oh yeah. So if that wall came down, it could be one. Huge you you could make one huge, huge area, and you could probably you could probably still use a side just for records and such. So this is is this where they used to park the the uh, fire truck? Once upon a time. Once upon a time, the fire truck was in here. Wow. Oh man, I love busting into safes. Madam Mayor, can I bust into this safe if I get George out here with a uh, sledgehammer? <laughs> okay, that was a no. I heard the laugh. That was a no. <laughs> She's like, <laughs> you're pushing it, Jeremy. <laughs> so you could actually, you could expand the entire building over. Yeah. And it's getting to that point already with meetings where there's, the last meeting was standing room only. Right. Yeah, standing room only. So that's something in the future I definitely would like to look at. So all of this, what is all of this here? These are all the files that the people they hired to scan in. Yeah, that's interesting. It's a pretty neat little piece of history. Um, all the other clerks were hired to scan in all these files, which they say they were scanned in. 
The problem being that I found three different locations they were scanned into, and not a one file is labeled as to what it is. Oh my so goodness! So for a year they're paying these people to scan in, and I basically am gonna have to start all over. Oh my goodness! That was a waste of money. So and that I, was the sixty yeah. hours a week, four thousand yeah. dollars. If they would have labeled the files, it would have been helpful, but nobody did. So then you have to click into the file see what's in it label it cross check it with the box you might as well just start start over, over. you literally just need to start over so that's a shame what a waste but that's another thing that'll get tackled it's not the top priority at the moment but it'll get tackled wow okay let's those seats are comfy let's 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 go on a field trip back to those seats <laughs> wait what's in the rest of this room back here this is the kitchen this is where when they collected food from the catholic charities They've had it here for the residents to come in, but okay. what I found, unfortunately, was that it was being stockpiled and not handed out, so there was a lot of out-of-date food in here. I cleaned out of this refrigerator moldy blocks of cheese, um, so the refrigerator is mostly bare it's now, clean now, but it wasn't being handed out, and if you open up that freezer, I haven't gotten to that yet. We were just hoarding food here. French fries? Yeah. Um, even in the building next door yesterday, I found food that was being hoarded. The cabinets had food. Um, not really sure how charitable that is. Wow. But I, so I've cleaned out all the out-of-date stuff. I'm working on that freezer next. But. All right, field trip. Back to the chairs. <laughs> Comfy chairs. Comfy chairs. The light's there. What question were we on? I don't know. Uh, this place sends you down a lot of rabbit that holes. That was a rabbit hole. That was a rabbit <laughs> hole. I'm not sure how I got to that point. Like, hey, what's yeah. on the other side of the wall? We that, were... that happens a lot in here, Rabbit Hole City. Well, we were on we were on the needs for the town. So oh, yeah. you, you stated Yeah, so opening up there. Yeah, so you stated you needed you needed better internet, you needed sound, better internet, and you need a better building to open it up and, and house all the people and all the documents and all of that. Yes. So that was three. I asked you for five. Wow. Two weeks in. Two weeks in. You have to remember, two weeks in. And in my opinion, she has already accomplished more in two weeks than has been accomplished in the past three years. I've only been here for three years. I saw almost nothing happen in three years. And in two weeks, I'm seeing everything happen. Yeah, and just going through, like even in the other building, there's a lot of old equipment in there that needs to be cleaned out. Everything was just ignored. And it's a, a whole other building that's not getting property properly utilized. So that's... Another thing. Is, is the other building, is that just all storage? Basically, there's a truck in there that gets driven once a year in a parade. So that needs to be relooked at. And there's a lot of old fire hose equipment from when there was a volunteer fire department, which is all out of date, non certified. Basically, it's not going to be good because the hoses are dry rotted. So they just left it in their old Christmas decorations that they quit putting up, which are not kept in a good condition. So most of them will probably have to be thrown out. Can we, uh, can we peek at that building when we're done here? Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, please don't throw the old fire hose away. I will hang it up at the schoolhouse. I want to use the hallway of the schoolhouse as a historic path of Otter Creek. So if there's anything that you go, well, this might look good displayed as part of the history, you know, even an old fire hose, yeah. I would love that. I would hang it up. I would, you know. Yeah, I, that's something definitely as we've been looking through things. And I'll pay. Seen some great history for things that I wouldn't just want to throw away because that's, there is a lot of history here in this town. So it'd be nice to preserve some stuff as we go along. So there's a lot. So we're still at three needs. I still need two more, two more needs. I, I know two weeks in, it's a lot. You, you have done a phenomenal job in a limited amount of time with almost no sleep. You've been going around the clock and I'm putting you in a position, putting you on the spot with a camera on you and a light in your eyes. I know, I'm just... Two more needs. Clerk? Yeah, we need to hire a clerk, which the ad should be going out in next week's paper we're still fine-tuning it um, 
but I have sent it, I have posted it online, and of course everybody can put in their resumes. They don't need to wait for the ad. Um, Yeah, that's a huge need because the clerk position, in my opinion, is the most important position in this town. So, what skill set do you think that clerk really needs to have? They need to know QuickBooks. They need to know the Microsoft Word, Excel, those different platforms. They need to be able to communicate with people in an effective manner um, and be courteous to people. They need to also be good at multitasking, doing emails, because you're going to be communicating with the council members, with other agencies. You're the coordinator of everything. You've got to coordinate with the supervisor of elections to do the town elections once a year. Uh, you need to be able to do the water billing. So you have to have good computer skills and good communication. There's so many different things. It's a lot of little tasks. I mean, Basically, I'm be advertising it for up to 20 hours a week because once this mess is cleaned, there's not going to be the need for all those hours. So you just have to know a lot of different little things. It's, I don't think it's going to be that difficult. Well, I think organization is a huge, huge thing. Yes. You know, if, if your life is disorganized, don't apply. Because the position needs to be for an organized person. Uh, Detail-oriented, that's huge. The ability to prioritize. And, and I've used this in my job descriptions before. If I hired a maintenance man, I would say, listen, I need the skill set of the person for the ability to actually prioritize. To understand that a clogged toilet is more important, higher priority than, than a shingle that just blew off of a roof. I don't want to see somebody uh, for a maintenance man putting a shingle on a roof when I have a clogged toilet. People have to go to the bathroom when they have to go to the bathroom. Once that's prioritized properly, then you can go up to the, to the maintenance, you know, do maintenance up on the roof and hand, take care of a shingle. So you have to be able to prioritize all those tasks and know what's most important. Really, bookkeeping skills, right? Yeah. Data entry, bookkeeping skills. And you have to be familiar with the statutes and the sunshine laws because you will be coordinating all that, doing the agendas, doing the minutes. Um, you just need to be familiar. And you can learn those things, but you need to be familiar with those things. There's just a lot of little things because you're going to be the record keeper. Well, and here's what I think is beautiful about this area in Otter Creek and that position. So we have, a, we have an absolutely gorgeous campground where residents can live full-time at in Otter Creek. So Shady Oaks Campground. And so somebody could actually go, you know what? I've lived my life wherever I've lived my life. I want to I wanna do some Florida life. And you could actually go camp at Shady Oaks Campground and you could have full-time residency there. And go, you know what? I only want part-time work. I just, I want to get out and I want to meet people and I want to, I want to be around people. And if you have that skill set, you could actually live full-time in Otter Creek, live in the camper life, van life, whatever it is, RV life, and then work in the office as well. So it doesn't just have to be a person from Otter Creek. It could be somebody from anywhere all over the world because there's opportunities to actually maintain residency here and do that part-time work and then enjoy Florida. Like what, what's one of the things that you enjoy most about Florida where you live? That you could visit Cedar Key. You could go fishing. Those are fun things to do. You can go tubing down the rivers. You can play in the springs. Oatmeal, cream pie, ice cream in Cedar Key. Huh? Somebody's addicted. Yeah, I have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I have a problem. I'll admit it. Yeah, no but I love it. There's so much outdoor stuff to do. You can go kayaking. You could go trail riding. There's just tons of outdoor, and I love the outdoors. Diving. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you can go diving. Diving. You there's... name it. Florida is like a playground. It really is. And we are in Otter Creek. We're right on the way to Cedar Key. There's a there's a special pod of dolphins there that hunt the only way they hunt. That's specific to that family pod. And going out to Cedar Key, I could sit on the decks of the restaurants and just sit there all day and watch the dolphins. I, I don't know why I love it so much. And pelicans. I don't know why I love pelicans. I think it reminds me of me. Like so clumsy on land, but so graceful over water. 
Except it doesn't remind me of me because I'm not graceful at anything. But I do love watching the Pelicans and the Dolphins. I just I could sit there and watch that all day. I really could. It's relaxing. So a so a person for that clerk position would be huge. Yes. Absolutely huge. All right, that would be number four. What, what's number five? Ooh, one more. I mean, if you ain't got it, you ain't got it. So that could be forthcoming. You you may just go. I, I don't know yet. Yeah. I'm, I'm not there. Yeah, there's so many things in the workings, but, and I know everybody's been dying to help, and we appreciate every bit of it, but yeah, we might have to come up with that number five later. So number five may be revealed in the next town council meeting. I'm curious, are you putting your agenda together already for the next town council meeting? Of course. Are there going to be any plot twists this time, <laughs> like last time? It seems like there always is. All right, you heard it. There's going to be a plot twist. She, that's a yes, right? Could be. I'm pretty sure that's a yes. It sounds like there's more plot twists to come. And just looking at the tables with all the electronics on it already, looks like, and that's she's already said that's not even all of it. It looks like uh, there's more to come in the next town council meeting. Would it be okay, Madam Mayor, if we go check out that other building right now? Sure. Let's do it. Going in the, it, would this be the annex building? Is that what we call it, annex? Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, these are these are for the water meters. Yes. Those are the water meter boxes. And the and new water meter behind me. Oh, here's the water meters. Oh my goodness. These are the water meters that the town actually purchases. The Neptunes. Except mine cost a ton more than that one there. <laughs> so they got a full box of them. There's boxes of them. There, there. Oh, these are all the old fire hoses? Not all of them, but some of them. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And there's some more over there. This truck behind you. What's, what's the story with the truck? Well, it gets driven once a year in a parade. That's it. And it has to be driven once a week or started once a week just to keep the battery going. What'd you say? It's raining? <laughs> it's beautiful. It's the sound of the tin roof. It's actually, it's not bad at all, but, um, oh, I found the Christmas. I found the Christmas yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's in bad condition. Holy cow. Look at that fire hose. Oh, my goodness. I don't know how many inches that hose is, but... How much do you think Mary and Russ would charge me for a hose that big? What's back here? More stuff. The problem here too is there's no lights. So when I came in for yesterday, I had to open the back door for it. Oh, just for light? Yeah, because the lighting doesn't work in here for some reason. But yesterday when I came in here, I found food that should have been handed food. out. Bags of clothing that should have been handed out. Coloring books that should have been handed out. Wow. Um, and then even back here, there's no light. But there's more? There's, this is where that old, very old equipment is. Holy yellow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, wow. That's an interesting. Look at the yellow phone, too. It's an old dominatrix. Oh, hold a second. Hold a second. Uh huh. Yeah. 1980s is calling you. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> look here. Look at the mark. Look, there's the actual real plastic. There's the weathered plastic. That's crazy. My goodness. There's another, there's another room back there. With more equipment. That's not even the stuff that you've put on so the tables yet. There's printers. There's other stuff. Is that fireman suits? There's fireman suits. I would buy those and I would put them on display at the schoolhouse. And some nozzles. That I would I would probably put that on display too. If if the town ever gets to the point where they want to get rid of any of this, I'm willing to pay good some money. Some more keyboards too. Well, yeah, um, we're gonna be cleaning all these a buildings lot. out because this is not okay. A lot. Yep, ball doesn't work. Oh, can I see one of these fireman suits? Sure. Can I pull one? You can. I'm sure there's mice in it, but... That's possible. Okay, let's see. Oh, man. How cool is that? This is... This was when there was the volunteer fire department. 
Okay, and then I don't know what I'm doing. That's cool. That would be so cool to put on display in the halls. Yeah. Man, that's awesome. Wow. So they sold the fire truck to Don, which was a beautiful truck, and then he didn't take care of it, and the weather and the elements have destroyed it, but you actually have all the supplies here. Yeah. Interesting. So goes the Otter Creek saga. It never ends. There's something around every bend. We just found the hoops from the basketball court in the park and, and the swing set. They literally just took everything down. It's, it's right behind you. They literally just took everything down and threw it in a back door so yeah. that kids couldn't play anymore. So no swings, no basketball. Now I've been told we need to repair the backboards and then we could put those back up. I mean, that's easy. You probably know somebody who, who'd donate money for that. That would be cool. If, then we could shoot hoops. That would be number five. Number we need, five. We need somebody to actually donate glass, beautiful backboards so that we can play basketball here again in Otter Creek. God's cleaning up Otter Creek too. 